It is no secret if you watch my channel that I am a big fan and a huge champion of that magical little kitchen tool, the slow cooker. I use my crock pots all year long. In fact, you've seen several crock pot videos that have come out here in the summer because I love to use my slow cookers to make meals for my family in the summertime so that I don't have to turn on my oven or my stove and heat up the kitchen during the warmer months. But if there were a crock pot season, so to speak, I definitely think it would be fall. There's just something about fall that I think we associate with cozy casserole recipes, with soup recipes, with chili, and just all kinds of yummy things that we make in the crock pot, right? As we are coming into fall, I thought it would be fun to share with you some new to us crock pot recipes. These are all recipes that I have not tried before, that my family has not tried before, that I have not seen elsewhere, and that seemed a little bit outside the box and just really creative for crock pot recipes. And let me tell you, these recipes were winners. There were some new favorites that we discovered as a result of this video. So stay tuned. My friend Carrie has a fantastic recipe website called eatingonadime.com. She also has grilling on a dime and desserts on a dime. And she and her sister Christina actually started a subscription service called Lazy Day Cooking Club, which features brand new crock pot recipes every month for their members. And they are letting me share four of those recipes with you guys today. And I will talk a little bit more about Lazy Day Cooking Club later, but I also wanted to let you guys know that this is sort of serving as my pantry slash use it up challenge for the month. I am trying to use some things up around my kitchen because I'm getting ready to do a big restock and reorganization for the school year. School is starting. So you will see that video coming out soon. And I wanted to just kind of use some things up around my kitchen. So I may be making a few very small adjustments based on what I have on hand, but I will make sure that I tell you about those as we happen upon them in the recipes. It is Sunday and we just walked in the door from church, but before I left this morning, I threw the ingredients for jalapeno chicken popper sandwiches into my crock pot. I started with three large chicken breasts, probably about one and a half pounds of chicken breast. And then I diced up two jalapeno peppers to go into the crock pot with those chicken breasts. Carrie's recipe calls for seasoning it with just a teaspoon of garlic salt, which I added, but I also had the very end of an open package of ranch seasoning, probably about two teaspoons that I went ahead and put in as well. I also added six pieces of cooked bacon crumbled and one block of cream cheese. I also put in just two tablespoons of water because I wanted there to be just a little bit of liquid at the bottom as the chicken was cooking. I let mine cook on high for about three and a half hours. So I'm going to shred the chicken up and then stir everything together to combine it. This recipe also calls for some shredded sharp cheddar cheese. So you can throw that into the crock pot at this point after you have cooked everything and shredded everything up and just stir it all together, or you could just serve it along with the jalapeno chicken mixture. I think this would be great in tortillas. It would be great over pasta or rice. It would be great on salads or in lettuce wraps. I am actually going to serve it with rolls to make little mini sandwiches. I had half a package of Rhodes rolls in the freezer that I wanted to use up. So I am just baking those up according to the package directions. I let them rise as we were in church this morning and they're gonna be ready to pop into the oven. So we'll be able to make some really delicious sandwiches with these. But I think this would work well with other kinds of bread if you wanted to get already made up dinner rolls or like Hawaiian rolls at the store. And then I'm just gonna serve this with chips, with fruit, and it's gonna be a really easy, delicious meal that will come together very quickly. Tonight I am making a beef and veggie noodle casserole. And this is essentially a one pot recipe. It's just that the one pot is my crock pot or actually it's my Instant Pot Aura slow cooker because I make the beef and veggie mixture and let it simmer in the crock pot. And then at the very end, before we're ready to serve it, I throw in the egg noodles that complete the meal. So let me show you how I'm doing that. I have my Instant Pot Aura slow cooker here and I have it set to the saute function. And right now I am browning one and a half pounds of ground beef with one onion chopped. I used my little rotary chopper to chop up the onion. I've got those both sauteing here together. 
To season this, the recipe calls for a teaspoon of chili powder, a teaspoon of garlic salt, a teaspoon of parsley, two teaspoons of paprika, which is about all I have left in here, so I need to add that to the list, a teaspoon of salt. I usually just say salt and pepper to your taste. A teaspoon of pepper. I'm just going to add some fresh cracked black pepper. And now I'm going to add a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. You could use two eight ounce cans, which are the little bitty cans. The recipe calls for one 12 ounce package of frozen mixed vegetables, but I don't have any frozen. I do have canned, so I'm gonna put in a couple of cans of mixed vegetables. I did drain the liquids out of these. And then one and a half cups of beef broth. And this is actually broth that was rendered whenever I made a roast about a month back. And I froze the leftover broth so that I could use it later on. So I'm just going to use some of that along with just a little bit of water probably in here. I'm gonna give this a stir. I'm gonna pop the lid on and I'm gonna let it cook on low for about five hours until I'm ready to finish it up with the noodles and the cheese. This has been simmering on low for about five hours now and everything in here was cooked to begin with so it's just, it just needed to kind of simmer together. And so now per the directions, I'm going to add eight ounces of egg noodles, which is about half of this 16 ounce bag. And I'm going to stir in one and a half cups of milk. And then I am actually bumping this to high because I find that my Instant Pot Aura cooks a little bit lower. It seems like the temperature doesn't always come up as high as my Crock-Pot brand slow cooker. So I'm gonna make sure that all these noodles are, are submerged. I'm bumping the temperature up to high. I'm gonna pop the lid back on and then check on this in about 20 to 30 minutes. It just needs to come up to a simmer and kind of cook those noodles through before we add the cheese to finish it off. The only thing that I do not like about the Instant Pot Aura is that I feel like the slow cook temperatures are lower. I don't know why, but I feel like things don't cook as fast or they don't come up to temperature like they should, which is why I mostly use this to cook things with ingredients that are already cooked, you know, things that just need to simmer. But I was having trouble getting this to come up to a decent temperature on high to cook the noodles. But what I will do to fix that is put it back on the saute function and it will basically bring it to a simmer really, really quickly. So I can give this a stir once the saute function has kicked in and it's kind of you know simmering a little bit. I can give that a stir and then bump it back down to cooking it on high, the high slow cook function. And that way it's already kind of up to temperature and it can finish cooking the noodles that way. This is looking and smelling very, very good right now. So the final step is to stir in two cups of mozzarella cheese, which is what I'm going to do. I imagine that other kinds of cheese would work fine for this, but I'm going to go ahead and stick with the one that Carrie recommends for this recipe, and then we will be ready to serve it. As I stated earlier, all of these recipes are coming from my friends Carrie and Christina over at Lazy Day Cooking Club, and I have been a member for about a year and a half now, and there are several things that I think set their recipes apart from others. First of all, they design all of these recipes to be prepared ahead of time for the freezer. So you can batch prep several crock pot recipes, put them in your freezer, and then all of the recipes have instructions for what to do the day that you cook them as well. So if you are a person who needs the convenience of preparing several meals ahead of time, or you are a freezer meal prep person, but you want more ideas for your crock pot, then this is definitely a service that you need to check out. I also like that they are very involved with their members. When you become a Lazy Day Cooking Club member, you get access to their Facebook group and they go live in there all the time. And these are meals that they are actually making for their families as well. So they will do a lot of live sessions where they are preparing meals, where they are cooking meals, and where they are just chatting and even answering questions and just engaging with their members. So it's very much a community. And I think a lot of people really appreciate that because they can bounce some ideas off of the creators of the recipes as well. This video isn't sponsored. I just really like the service that Carrie and Christina offer. I think it's very valuable. And so I wanted to share it with you guys again. And I will leave a link in the description box below to Lazy Day Cooking Club. And there is a discount code there as well that will give you 50% off your first month with Lazy Day Cooking Club. And 
thank you again to Carrie and Christina for letting me share these Lazy Day Cooking Club recipes with you guys today. If I look tired, it's because I am. <laughs> And it is actually the day before the day before school starts. I am slowly crawling through the end of this summer and I know some of you are with me. I know this because I posted a video yesterday about being tired of cooking and it has 25,000 views. <laughs> so I know some of you are there with me. I'm sorry that you are tired too, tired of the heat and, and looking for more ideas for cooking or if you're like me and you're kind of ready to get back into the routine that fall and the school year builds, I'm sorry that you're feeling that way. I am glad that I'm not alone, but I am right there with you. So tonight we are having a recipe called crock pot white enchilada casserole. And I'm very intrigued by this because it reminds me of a skillet recipe that I used to make a lot whenever I was first married, where you make kind of like a Southwest style or like a Tex-Mex style sauce. And then you actually put cubed tortillas, like cut up tortilla strips into the sauce and they turn into like little tortilla dumplings. So we're gonna do that at the end, right before we're ready to serve this recipe too, except this one is with chicken. So in my crock pot right now, I have about three, three to four chicken breasts, probably about a pound and a half of chicken breast, and then one tablespoon of cumin and one can of green enchilada sauce. I used a package of green enchilada sauce that I had from Thrive Market. So I've got that on high, I'm gonna let it cook on high for about four hours or so until the chicken is ready to shred up and then we will finish up the recipe and I'll show you how I'm doing that. This smells so, so good. I can really smell that cumin in there. My chicken is done. I'm gonna take it out and shred it up and then put it right back in the pot. This recipe calls for stirring in half a cup of sour cream at this point, but what I have is plain Greek yogurt. And since I'm trying to use stuff up, I decided not to go out and buy sour cream, that I would just use plain Greek yogurt. I've done that many times in place of sour cream, and it works wonderfully for me. So I'm gonna stir in half a cup of this and one cup of shredded Monterey Jack cheese. And then I'm going to add my tortillas. This recipe calls for eight taco size tortillas and then I just used my pizza slicer to slice those up in two little squares. I'm going to stir those into the chicken and sour cream and cheese mixture. I'm gonna pop the lid back on and let it cook for an additional 10, 15 minutes or so. And then I will top it with the remaining Monterey Jack cheese, one, one more cup of shredded Monterey Jack cheese and it will be ready to serve. Okay, this turned out so delicious. I've already tried it. It's so flavorful, even with just a handful of ingredients. Really easy and very different from other crock pot meals that I've had, so definitely a winner. Highly recommend, 10 out of 10. As I stated earlier, I was kind of trying to look for some new crock pot recipes, like something just a little bit different. And there was a recipe in my Lazy Day Cooking Club dashboard that used cube steak. It was for like a creamy cube steak pasta style dish. And I was like, ooh, that is really interesting. I don't think I've ever tried cube steak in the crock pot. But because I'm trying to use stuff up around my kitchen, I, I didn't have any cube steak on hand. I didn't have all the ingredients. And I thought, you know, I think I will probably make something else. But one of the great things about their website is that you can actually favorite different recipes that they offer each month. And when you do that, those recipes will be available to you whenever you go into your member dashboard. So instead of having access to just this month's and last month's recipes, you also have access to all of the recipes that you favorited. So I went ahead and clicked that little heart over that recipe so that I can come back to it in a month or two whenever I am you know, looking for another new crock pot recipe and I have the ingredients to try it out. The recipe I decided to utilize instead is a crock pot bolognese. So it's a very meaty tomato-based pasta recipe and I had already planned to make spaghetti. I've been thinking that sounds really good and that'll be a really easy back to school meal this week. And I decided, hey, I think I have all of the ingredients for this recipe. I've never made spaghetti sauce quite like this before. So let's give this a try. We're gonna throw the ingredients into the crock pot. Let me show you what I'm doing. In my Instant Pot Aura, I have one pound of ground beef and one pound of Italian sausage. And I have 
have my slow cooker on the saute function so that I can brown those up right here in the slow cooker, but you could do this step on the stove if you're using just a traditional slow cooker. And normally I would have the meat in a recipe like this. I would use half a pound of ground beef and half a pound of sausage, or maybe just choose one pound of one or the other. But I've decided just to go all in today on this. I'm just gonna make it exactly as the recipe says. And I wanna make enough of this that it's gonna have leftovers that we can have for lunch or maybe even for some dinners over the weekend if we wanna have a leftover night. So I'm also going to add in one yellow onion chopped and I'm gonna add that right in with the meat while it's browning because it can kind of saute in the fat that is being rendered by the meat. My meat and my onions are just about done browning, so I'm actually going to add a few cloves of garlic that I'm just going to put in here with my garlic press, and I want them to get to saute for just a minute or two along with everything else. And then I'm going to turn my slow cooker off, turn the saute function off so that I can add the rest of the ingredients. Now I'm going to add one tablespoon of Italian seasoning and I never measure this, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Two cans of fire roasted tomatoes. And this is something that is new for me. I don't know that I've ever used fire roasted tomatoes in making my, my red sauces or my meat sauces or my marineras. I've mostly just used regular tomatoes. So this will be a little bit of a different flavor for me. And then one jar of marinara. This is a can, but it's the same amount. It's about 28 ounces. 20, 24 ounces of marinara or pasta sauce. So, you know, a jar of your regular pasta sauce should do as well. It also calls for just half a cup of water. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt and pepper. This isn't in Carrie's recipe. The sausage is gonna have quite a lot of seasoning and obviously the fire roasted tomatoes are gonna add a lot of flavor as well. So it probably won't take very much. I'm going to just give this a stir and then I'm gonna pop the lid on and I'm gonna let this simmer on low. It is about mid-morning. We're gonna have this for dinner so it has plenty of time to simmer all day long. Here it is, dinner is ready. I went ahead and just served this over spaghetti. Carrie's recipe calls for making up the pasta and then actually stirring it into the sauce and serving it all together, but we're just gonna eat it this way tonight. It smells amazing, cannot wait to dive in. I hope you found a new and exciting idea here, something different to try in your slow cooker. And thank you again to Carrie and Christina over at Lazy Day Cooking Club. I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. Be sure to go and check them out if you want some more crock pot cooking inspiration. Pick out one of these videos to watch next, and I'll see you guys there.